evening and welcome. As the screen behind me says, thank you all for being here this evening, first Wednesday night that we've been able to return to meeting here. And this is a whole lot better than looking into a laptop or a camera to look out and see those of you who are here tonight. Of course, we are still missing many at this point and will continue to be uh, for the weeks to come while we have weather like this and, and the concern uh, of this pandemic and so it's fully behind us. But uh, for those that are at home, we miss you. We're praying for you, thinking about you continually, looking forward to having you back here with us. And of course, those that are at home will be able to see this midweek study recording sometime on Thursday, sometime tomorrow. We're used to getting those loaded up ahead of time, and those of us who are here tonight are now accustomed to sitting in our homes and participating in Bible study while we're apart on a Wednesday evening, but uh, those that are at home will be able to see this tomorrow, and we appreciate your uh, patience and your understanding with that. The only announcement that uh, I'm aware of is this, that we are, we are back, we are here, we'll be here, Lord willing, this Sunday for Bible class at 10 a.m., for the worship service that will begin at 10.50 Sunday morning, and also evening service at 6 o'clock. And now that we're back here on Wednesday night at 7, remember to be back here next Wednesday night at 7. We look forward to all of those opportunities to worship, to fellowship, and study God's Word together. We do have a few prayer requests, and I've asked Paul if he will lead us in prayer tonight for uh, some of these different individuals that that we'll mention. Uh, Hazel is conspicuous in her absence there in the row with Harriet and Best, and God tells me that's because of the pain. Uh, suffering with arthritis pain and her neck. Okay. She's our most chronic ankylosis that ever had. Yeah. And had an appointment today already? She went and got an x-ray. Okay. Didn't hear all of that from, from Harriet. Hazel is experiencing quite a bit of pain that we have checked to, to make sure that what they're dealing with there is the arthritis pain, and it is. So they're going to begin to try to help manage that pain for her. She was struggling with that on Sunday, uh, told me then. So let's keep Hazel uh, in our prayers. Also, you would have received uh, the one call this week that we need to continue uh, praying for uh, Mike and Louise. Mike has tested positive for COVID-19, so pray for Mike and his recovery. Pray for Louise that she does not uh, come down with this virus. And also, as uh, Jeff mentioned Sunday, pray for Gabe and Debbie, who uh, are struggling with a reaction to the vaccine that they've had. Uh, pray that that will uh, pass quickly and that those who have received that vaccine are waiting to get the second part of the vaccine, uh, that it goes smoothly for them. Of course, we need to continue praying for Eddie uh, and for the treatments that he is now undergoing. He's in his uh, third week this week of the seven weeks of treatment. We keep praying that those treatments will be effective in treating and eradicating that cancer. Uh, good news from Scotland is that Ian's surgery was successful, and that was moved um, one day. It was supposed to be last Thursday, and ended up being last Friday, someone that was being operated on, the procedure was much more complicated than, than we anticipated. So Ian was pushed back one day, had the surgery last Friday, all went well, and we need to continue to pray that that will be those troubles in the rearview mirror for Ian, that they will have taken the tumor and removed his kidney, and that going forward everything will be well for Ian and Barbara. Uh, Kristen still is seeking answers and, and Longing to feel better, and so we appreciate your ongoing prayers for her, and that she would be able to find some solutions that will help with the way that she's been feeling. We need to keep praying. Yes, uh, Mike. Uh, excuse me, interrupt you. Uh, I have a what's this called? An online friend. His name is Patrick. Okay. And he has been diagnosed with cancer. First, for him, please. Never met him. Okay. So he has cancer? Yes. yes. Okay. 
This is a friend of, of Mike's, uh, his name is Patrick. He has cancer, so pray for us. Uh, Patrick without cancer, for Mike without friendship. Also continue praying for Susie's dad, pray for Adam, his health. Certainly wonderful seeing him uh, on Sunday, he and, and mom both. And uh, of course not out with us tonight, guys folks, Les and Jared, we want to continue praying for Les and his health. We also want to remember those that are that have various struggles with their health and are in a situation where they're especially isolated more than, than any of us. That's uh, Chuck and of course Donna there in the same facility, uh, nursing home, and of course Chuck and Flo there at home. You want to mention a yeah, little bit about Yeah, let me interject tomorrow? that. Um, just a blessing. We have, uh, we were We've been given an opportunity uh, for one person to go visit uh, Chuck, so I'll be going to visit him tomorrow afternoon. So if you have any anything that you want to communicate to Chuck, let me know. So um, is, that, is that going to be an ongoing thing? Will it be six weeks or something like that? Or? That still remains to be seen because they're, you know, they monitor everything daily down there, yeah. and the only reason they're allowing this is because. They are concerned about about Chuck uh, Chuck's faith, really, because they've known him to be extremely a man of faith, and they feel that that's kind of shaken right now, and they they're concerned about that. So, so you can tell them that I'm sure there are a lot of people praying for him. You just think my my love and regard. Okay. I think think about it every day. Amen. That's a brother in need of our prayers, and, and you will reach him if you pick up the phone and call him. He will, he will pick up, and you'll be able to stay on for a little while uh, and talk with him. I was able to do so today, and uh, he is very much looking forward to seeing Guy. No, uh, no substitute for being there in person, even although uh, we make those phone calls. He is looking forward to seeing Guy tomorrow afternoon, and uh, we spent the last couple of weeks looking at uh, answers to that question, how do we know that we're saved, in order to encourage all of us and to bolster faith where we're struggling sometimes with faith. And so I have a, a letter that I'll give you tonight, guys, yeah, for Chuck, and ask you to pass that on with our love to him. Uh, also, in, in addition to Chuck and, and Donna, Chuck and Flo as well, uh, Mary is also feeling cut off right now, I'm feeling that pretty keenly, uh, her health problems preventing her from being able to, to get here. She knows it's going to be some time before she can rejoin us. So pray for her as well. Are there any others we need to pray for before Paul shares? Yeah, what should I do? Our grandson Moses, he's 16 months and battling his double virus. It has nothing to do with corona. But his temp has been spiking up 102, 103. What was the name there? Logan. Logan? Logan. Okay. Logan. <laughs> Battling a double virus, yeah. high temperature, and what age is Logan? He's 16 months old. 16 months old. He's our youngest grandson. Okay. So little one, 16 months old, and Paul knows all about that. And we'll add Logan to our prayer list tonight. Anyone else that we need to pray for? There's a lot of people <laughs> That's for across sure. the whole country that don't have electricity and hmm. no heat. I wonder what it's going to take before the nation wakes up and we turn to God. So much, so much division. Much, so much division in our nation. Yep. It's so polarized. All of the struggles, all the division, difficulties that so many are going through. And he is the answer, and here are the answers. We turn to him. Try doing things his way. How about that for an idea? Seems like that's how this nation was founded. Sure would be a good thing to, to turn to those ways. Get back to that. Solve all our ills. When, when I think of our responsibility, you know, Christians as, as citizens of our country, one phrase just keeps coming to my mind over and over and over. 
such anger. Mm. You know what? I don't know chapter and verse, but straight from Esther, huh? Yeah, I think it's 413. Okay, I looked it up. For such a time as this, my sin. And that is it. Who knows, but you have come for such a time as this. We know that is true. Tomorrow, Thursday afternoon, Guy is coming for such a time as this. Mike, in a friendship with someone, for such a time as this. God wants to use us, his people. Touch the lives and the hearts of those around us. And would that we could just do it all at once, but it's one person at a time, isn't it? Through one relationship at a time. One taking one opportunity at a time. And Esther, Each one that he gives Esther us. was one person. Yeah. One person. Right. And look at the effects of Esther. Such a time as this. It's a great message. Great encouragement to us. It fits right in there with all that we've been talking about from Colossians and the revival. Such a time as this. Anyone else before we sing our first song and ask Paul to come lead our prayer? Should be a great encouragement to our day. Pardon? Should be a great encouragement for us. That's how I take it. Mm -hmm. And that comes in my head. It's oh, yeah. Sort of encouraging. I, I, I think we should just turn over to Mike and let him keep going on this on this study. Straight into Esther. I don't think it's my time. But, <laughs> 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 but you are right. What an encouragement. Think about the impact God has when he uses his people. I mean, that's, that's what this narrative is all about. And purposely not use that word story because these are not stories. These are not made up. This is not a, a parable about Queen Esther. This is how God used those who were faithful to make, bring about great change. And sometimes we, we sit back and we wonder, what's, how, what can we do? What can I do? Just little old me. It's not what I, it's not what you can do or what I can do, it's what he can do. That's it. And there's, we saw already Sunday, there's nothing he can't do if we're available to be used by him. Yeah. If we take that attitude for such a time as this, and that's me, and we maybe take another Old Testament example from Isaiah, here am I, send me. If we have that willingness, then he will use us at those times. And the change may start out small. It may be one, but it's that ripple effect. However you like to think about it. See those ripples on that pool? Or that domino effect that we talked about. And before you know it, it's not one, it's dozens, it's hundreds, it's thousands. And it can even be hundreds of thousands and millions changed by Jesus Christ. So, that, that you're right, is, encouraging. That, that is key, Jesus Christ. Mm. And as Guy said, it's faith. And Jesus said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, mm. Our faith can be little, tiny. And this relates to our Tuesday night Bible reading this morning. Yeah. Our faith can be little, because we were told as disciples, you need a little faith, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our faith can be little, but yeah. God Jesus can take that faith and use that little bit of faith yeah. to do whatever he wants. Yeah. To move that mountain. Yeah. That faith is small as the smallest seed they were able to understand. Take the faith of a mustard seed and move a mountain. What can a bigger faith do? Move a bigger mountain? I don't, know. <laughs> I don't think that's the point. The point is that it's, he's the one who do this. And so if we are willing to step out in faith, maybe trembling, maybe like the fellow that says, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And we step out in our little faith, he can move that mountain be thrown into the sea because he is able are we willing will we step out in faith will we say Lord here am I for such a time as this use me put it in his hand see what he does with it great thoughts
We haven't even begun a Bible study yet. Oh, yeah, we have. Now, aren't we? We have. <laughs> You're right, we have. Just not the one I was thinking we were having. That's okay, it happens. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> it sure wouldn't have happened last week because it was just me and that old laptop. And I did all the talking and it did all the listening. I don't like that. I much prefer to be hearing from you and thank you for the thoughts, brothers, that you're sharing there in regards to encouraging us because it is easy to be discouraged in these times. And he is still in control. And I know that we're but a few tonight and many more probably watching at home tomorrow, but we're among many, many, many who are facing this. The number of brothers and sisters that we have that we just don't know yet across this land and around this world, who along with us are praying about all of these things, individuals like these, and we're united in prayer with Folks in Scotland right now over one brother, Ian, and recently Eric as well. We're a family, a far bigger family than we sometimes stop and realize. And all it takes is a little faith. The Lord, grow our faith and help us Amen. have enough faith that you would move those mountains, that you'd make those changes. You find us willing such a time as this. We can have our song, our prayer, our other song and go home because that's a lesson right there. Appreciate you sharing that thought. Esther, what did you say? 414? Somewhere around there? Oh, wouldn't be hard to find. Just read the whole book. It is certainly good to have this opportunity to be together here tonight. Does anyone else have anything you'd like to say or share before we sing our first song and ask Paul to come and lead our prayer? I thought that same thing when I came in the back door. I went downstairs and I, I came back to the church and I said, how good it is to be here. I missed that last thing. That's how good it is to be here. Oh, like you said. Amen. Amen. How good it is to be here. Seems like it's been a long time. Encourage you with this too, because I, I think it's four four fourteen. Four fourteen. That's the four fourteen. I had a cup of coffee before I came here tonight. So that's <laughs> <laughs> this uh, might not, but might 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 not be done. A cup of coffee might keep him going here for a while longer. Well, I, think, I think it wasn't decaf. <laughs> <laughs> leaded. Get a leaded coffee. He's ready to go. What's that, Harry? Give him a microphone. I can't, I can't hear beyond microphones. Give him a microphone. Yeah, I think that the one right there should be picking them up for those that are at home. They'll be saying, man, i got to come out here and join this discussion next week. See, it's, make sure Mike's had his coffee and I'll have mine and we'll meet at the building. <laughs> we'll, we'll go all night. Free pizza next week, too. <laughs> Did I hear you say pizza? I don't usually miss that word. <laughs> uh, I appreciate the Big words of TV too. Appreciate the words of encouragement uh, that, that you've shared tonight. And I want to encourage you with this too. I um, thrilled that we were able to have our, our study called our New Life Bible Study. Uh, Vest and Harriet were part of that, and uh, Dawn was here, and Hazel, of course, was with us on Sunday pick that up and continue it. Uh, we were missing Megan at that time because she's been uh, promoted her, her job. She does such a great job there and she was rewarded with promotion that meant uh, more responsibility, more hours. And uh, she's working out now where she can get back here uh, again. But uh, Sunday past, she was having to work and thought that it looked as though that was going to be the case for this Sunday and, and was saying, I was supposed to be off. Don had been Done been changed on me, she was saying, and, and now she was able to work that out and figure that out where she can join us for our next study. So uh, I'll put something through our, our little group discussion there on the text uh, here at the end of the week. But that's something to be encouraged about, too. We have these wonderful new sisters who are 
as we are hungering for the Word of God, wanting to know more, wanting to grow, not just in our knowledge, but in our faith, and in our walk together with Him and our relationship with God. And that is such a, a shot in the arm. You talk about a, lead, a, a regular coffee, a leaded coffee, that's more than that for me. It's a shot in the arm for me to see their love of Him and one another and their faith. And just to see that continued growth, the dynamism of that growth as we grow together and as we continue to grow together with Him. Okay, keep looking for the clicker. Are we ready to sing our first song? I'm sorry that you're doing that under the mask. Let's start with this song and we'll ask Paul to come and lead a prayer for us. <clears throat> Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the sick say, I am whole. Let the bound say, I am free because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Give Are seeking for us, us to be to be one and, and, and unite 
that that would happen, Father. Not only in this country, but Father, people, instead of doing what they see in their own eyes as right, they would turn towards you and look at your word. And Father, that they would see you for them and say, Lord, here I am. And that we would do what you ask us, ask us to do. And Father, this country will come together to worship you and not worship itself, not worship other gods, and not worship money or power or um, anything else that gets in our way, we would turn towards you as, as a nation, as a whole, that your church would lead. Father, give us the strength to, as we've already said in Esther, that maybe it's our time to step forth and lead. Father, give each, each, each one of us the courage to go out and say to our neighbor, say to our co-worker, say to our friend, you know the Lord. Father, there are many on our prayer list this evening who want to bring to you. But as, as we've already mentioned, people going through illnesses and cold weather and power outages, Father, ask that you would be with them. That you would keep them warm. Give them the help that they need so they can stay warm, stay healthy, and turn towards you in, in, their, in their hour of need. Father, we want to lift up to you so we go sit, 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 specifically going through our arthritis pain with Dr. Sarah House and help her with her, her pain so that she can be comforted. Father, we want to lift up Mike Sapp and, and, and Louise with uh, his positive test for COVID that she can uh, not, not have a, as, a, as, a, as severe of a case of COVID that she will recover and that she can leave where it will not will not um, come down to as well. Father with Gabe and Debbie with the re re reaction to 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 the vaccine that they have the flu that they will have the strength to um, survive that as well. Eddie with his cancer treatment going through all the treatments of his week. Father with many more weeks to go that you would be with him, help him to have comfort, have the strength every day as he's going through those. We give praise to you for Ian going through his surgery well, helping to continue to recover. And Father, we just pray for all that we need to hear from us and that. Father, we ask that you be with Kristen and her um, troubles at doctors and figure out what's going on with her and give her answers, give her a treatment plan. But Father, we know that you are the one who heals, you are the one who knows everything and can do great wonders for us. Father, I want to lift up to you uh, Mike's son, Patrick, who is been di diagnosed with cancer. Father, help him to see that his health is in you. And tell the doctors how to treat him, how to um, uh, go about fighting his cancer. And Father, that he will look towards you as well. Father, I want to lift up some of our elderly who are going through many health problems with Adam Nix and Duran. Uh, Les and Jerry with their health, uh, Chuck and Donna in, in the nursing home there as well, and Chuck and Sister McCurdy and Mary, and also uh, uh, our grandson Logan going through the flu, flu, flu viruses. Father, we, we ask that you would be with all these people, be with the doctors that are treating them, know what to do, and Father, help us to know how we can reach out to them and give them hope and encouragement. Father, help them to look towards your word and know how to be encouraged with that. Father, we thank you that we are to meet again together to have worship, to study your word. Father, help us to hear with our ears, understand with our minds, and follow through with our hearts. In your name, Christ name, pray. We'd only come out together tonight to do that. That was worth it for me. You know, we sometimes gather, we're in meetings, or we see groups of men gather at a, a breakfast place in town. They sit around the tables for about, I don't know, two or two and a half hours, solving all the world's problems, we, we sometimes say. We did more in those few minutes than we could do with thousands of meetings. 
We just took those loved ones, those brothers and sisters, and those concerns that we discussed and expressed together before the throne, before God Almighty. Lord, he, has, he was already at work. And we just asked him, God, will you do this? What do you think he's going to say? Our Father. We just ask him to help. We just ask him to do things that are impossible for us, but not for him. And our faith, collectively in this room tonight, and there at home says, he will do it. Praise God. Thank you for leaving us in prayer that way, Paul. Let's sing this song and then we'll journey into our text for a little while tonight. I am mine no more. I am mine no more. I've been born did it to myself with that song, God. Now I want to talk about uh, 1 Thessalonians 4. He will come again, won't he? Amen. <laughs> Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. And I want to say, hey, there was the class and now we're going this way a little bit like we had Sunday when we sang Restore My Soul. Uh, what a joy it is for us to be together and hearing from different ones following Sunday and hearing so many say the same thing. What a joy to be with people of like faith and our brothers and sisters in Christ to be able to continue to build and to renew in some cases those bonds of fellowship between us. And this past Sunday and also again tonight, I'm thankful for the presence of each one of you here. Uh, we have looked at a number of different Subjects over the past weeks on our video lesson series, um, ranging from faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these being love, to, to look in the last few weeks at how we can know that we're saved, looking at Paul's experience and his conviction that he's fully convinced, and the one that he's believed in, and is persuaded convinced that he will guard that which was entrusted to him for that day. We have assurance of our salvation in Jesus Christ. We had been together back before all of this uh, happened and all of this stop, start, stop, start. We've been in the book of 1 Peter, in the third chapter, and we've come to a verse that uh, we know well, uh, one that I love, one that I'm excited to be doing spending more time on and engaging in more discussion over that we've already discussed a little bit and there's so much more that we can glean from it, that we can take from it to strengthen our faith, convict us that we are here for such a time as this in specifically this regard. And it's found in verse 15 of 1 Peter chapter 3. And tonight we will read two verses, 1 Peter 3, 15 and 16. And we will be spending some considerable time here before we get on past this 15th verse of the third chapter. But let's read these verses together. 1 Peter 3, 15 through 16. 
But in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. Here, everything that we've looked at up to this point in verse 15 culminates with this statement. Everything up till this point has been focused upon who we are and the character and the conduct which must characterize our lives as followers of Christ so that our influence will never be lost. And the focus, I think, through two and a half chapters has been living out lives no matter the circumstance. And, and we've seen those to whom Peter is originally uh, writing as he records these words of the Holy Spirit. We've seen that, that things are not rosy. And, and what they've linked to that, not just looking back on this past year, but looking back uh, a lot longer than that for each one of us here uh, through our lives. And yet, whatever the circumstance, whether we're up here, whether things are going along, smooth sailing, plain sailing as we might say, or whether we're down here and, and it's bumpy, it's rough, hard going, tough sledding we might say, the focus has been on whether it's here or there or any point in between, wherever we're at, living lives that match this message. Living out lives that are compatible with the message that we're trying to share. Not incongruous with that message. But now he is starting to turn to address that message here in the 15th verse that we have to be sharing. And all throughout we've seen that it's by our actions, by our deeds, by our conduct, with the character that we have in Christ that we're sharing this message. But now we see that it's not just, not only here, but we'll revisit this in the second chapter. We've seen it mentioned before, that it's not just in our conduct, though we've said all along that is a crucial, that is an integral part of successful evangelism, of being able to share our faith. Our conduct is vitally important, of huge significance. But we are called here, and we can make no mistake, to share this message in both word and deed. Not just by our action. That would be letting us off the hook in some respects. I said before, easy evangelism, this idea that we, we live this stuff and and, and in so doing, fulfill the, the call of Scripture. Not so when you look at Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And, um, as we'll, we'll go back and visit in a moment, chapter 2 and um, verse 9, and chapter 3 and verse 15, and over and over again throughout Scripture, we're not let off the hook. We've got to combine living lives that match our message with sharing that message with putting it into words, with talking to other people, as Paul so eloquently expressed in our prayer tonight. That's what we need to be doing, both in word and deed. You see, if we don't live lives that match our message, when we open our mouths to share that message, we've already been written off. They're not going to listen. They don't care what we have to say, because we've undermined our influence with them in some way. So we need to be sharing this message both by our conduct and our character, in action and in deed, with the works of our lives, but also with the words that come from our lips. We've seen the emphasis placed on both things thus far in this great book, 1 Peter. We saw it back at the beginning of this chapter, when we saw that our sisters, with husbands who do not believe the word, and this is chapter 3, verses uh, 1 through through the rest of that section, but really specifically 1 through 2, that they are to what? Win them over. 
without words, without saying a word. We're going to win them over by their behavior. That's living lives that match our message as the purity and reverence of the way that their lives live will win these men over without words. Those sisters in Christ back there in the first century, maybe even among us now, don't need to nag their husbands to come with them to church. They don't need to argue, try to argue them into Christ. They need to live these lives. But as they see the purity and the reverence of the way they live, their, their husbands will desire to know more. They will want the answer to the reason for the hope that we have. If we won over without words, eventually it will take some, some words. It will take sharing a few things, but if they see it in our lives that, you know, this is specific context where it's talking to a specific group of Christians, I think there's application to be made for all of us. Not only in that first century context, but here in the 21st century, that we would live lives that match our message so that we're already beginning to win people over without words before we even utter a word. And that's the emphasis that's placed here by the Holy Spirit through Peter in this wonderful letter on our actions and on our deeds so that our conduct influences other people for Christ. But we know that is not the only way that we share the good news. And so we also saw as we looked through uh, this wonderful book up to this point, the emphasis placed on sharing it with our words. And we saw that back, as I said, in the second chapter and verse 9. Whereas in that last section we considered from chapter 3, we were drawing an inference for us all from a specific example that addresses Christian wives in a specific context. But this statement, we can make no mistake, is made to all those who've been called out of darkness and into his wonderful light, as he says, because we are his chosen people, his royal priesthood, his holy nation, a people who belong to him. All this God has done, last part of verse 9, that you may declare, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. This is a message that we are also to declare. We have to live lives that match our message. We have to, to watch our conduct and not ruin our influence. But we're also, beyond all of that, to declare this message. Not only in the way that we live, in our actions and by our deeds, but with our words. We're to share this message. We discussed some things on Sunday evening. I already brought that to our attention. we got to have that boldness, that courage. Even when, boy, we feel the pressure. We're starting to sweat. We're worried about what someone's going to say, what they're going to think. And yet we still need to declare that message. Jesus' name is to be on our lips, to be on the tip of our tongues. We're to proclaim the gospel message with our mouths. What do you think is the significance here in the statement that he makes first in chapter 3 and verse 15? as regards ultimately sharing that message with our mouths. What do you think the significance is before we even get to the part that we know best of all to always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have? What's the significance of the fact that he starts with, but in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord before he even comes to this sharing it with our lips and with our mouths part of the verse? What's the significance there for you of the emphasis that's being placed on setting apart Christ as Lord? You have to be first. 
to him. He has to be first. You want to expand a, a little more on it? Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything, and do it not only when their eyes are on you to curry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Mm. So if we get our focus on Jesus, if we have that sincerity of heart and reverence for Christ, then we're automatically going to be what we're called to be. Right. And we're going to be that example wherever we are. In whatever circumstance we're in in life, we're still going to be following Christ. And we're going to be setting that, that consistent example in Christ. No matter whether, because later on down in chapter 4, verse 1, it says on the other side of that, that the masters are, are right and fair with their slaves. Because why? They have a master in heaven. Mm -hmm. Jesus is it is the, the central point. He is the answer in this book. Mm -hmm. There is, I mean, Jeff said it perfectly. Yep. Without Jesus, there's nothing. Yep. Absolutely. Other thoughts there? Yes, Paul. And then Mike. I was thinking about that, that verse, but I, I, I think I think come I crucify and, and think back to the old old, 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 old Testament we think we think be on a sanctuary. That they went to worship in. Mm -hmm. And that's our heart should be right in that sense, right in that altar with God. If that's if we're not there mm -hmm. when we repent, what are we defending? Yeah. We're going to the sanctuary defending something else. We mm -hmm. our heart should be right there in that sanctuary. That's where we should set our heart. Right before God's throne, mm -hmm. right before his altar. Otherwise it's 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 a useless place. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that thought. Well, that statement makes me feel or think that to set apart for the Lord in your mind is one thing, but when it's in your set apart in your heart, mm. that's something deeper for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. It's something in your heart. Mm. Yeah, I like that thought too. Mental assent, knowledge, have it in our mind, and we need it in our mind. It's, it's not, these are not mutually exclusive. We need both. But mental assent to something, acknowledgement of something, okay, but have it in our heart, completely yielding our, our will, loving Him with whole heart, honoring Him with our whole heart. Going way beyond just knowing he is Lord, but but having him on the throne in our heart. You're, you're right. That's a significant change heard, agent in heard, us. I've heard people say that. You know, it's in my heart. Mm -hmm. This is in my heart. Yeah, we hear that phrase a lot. You're right. And, and you know, back to Paul's point, we are that sanctuary. He is in his church. And he is in us. And if he's not on the throne in our heart, I, I suggest, and it kind of comes back to the, the original thought that Jeff had, our defense falls flat, doesn't it? What defense are we going to make if he's not? We might, you know, have some arguments that, yeah, that they they're going to struggle to answer this one. I can I can shoot some holes in their theory, and I can tell them why it couldn't be this. It has to be that. And I I know that up here. But the defense that we want to make in a watertight case for the truth of the gospel can only be made when it's with whole heart. When 
He's in the sanctuary of our hearts, and he is on the throne in our lives, and he is Lord of us. Then, then we're ready. Then, as God was talking about, that it's going to be the, just a natural overflow of lives lived in reverence, that the words are going to come out when the opportunities arise. And we will give that defense, and it will be, it will be reasoned logic. It'll be with our minds, but it'll be more than that. It'll be with our whole hearts, it'll be an impassioned plea for our loved one, for our friend, for our neighbor, for our colleague, for even a stranger that we have opportunity to talk to. Think on these things to, to guide them towards the Word so that the Word can touch their heart as it has, and maybe for some of us long ago, touched ours continually. It's touching ours because He's on the throne in our heart. I think Jeff wanted to come back in on that, and so Alan's hand too. So please, Brother Peter, either way. Yes. To give a defense. Mm. Is a great motivator why we need to be here Sunday morning Bible study, Wednesday evening Bible study, because the sermon is feeding. All of us. All of us. But the Bible study is where we build the fortress. Our individual fortress so that we can make a defense. Absolutely. Amen. And the sermon is feeding all of us. When you're standing up here sharing a sermon as others in here have, many occasions, you know it's speaking directly to you encouraging you, it's building you. And in the Bible study, we're building those strongholds, those fortresses of faith from which we give that defense. Good thought. Appreciate that perspective too. Alan? Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. It says, set apart Christ as Lord. It's about Him. Shared, if I asked you to tell us about a favorite teacher that you had at whatever level, whether it's grade school or high school or beyond, you're going to come up with someone who may not be the smartest teacher you ever had. It may not be the person that can just lay out, that all out for you, but it's someone who is passionate about what they were teaching, about their subject, almost always. And they're going to do that uh, in a way that just resonates uh, with their, their students, with their, with their class. So we have that conviction, that, that passion, as we talked about Jesus' love for us, our love for him, and what he's done for us. That's what we need to have as we share it. And I think also uh, what Alan spoke to there uh, in regards to this being about him, he's on the throne, then and that takes us out of this equation, doesn't it? And that speaks to a lot of those fears that we have. And to worry about how we're going to be received and, and how people might react. And, and it no longer is about us and fear of our being rejected because we're not being rejected. We're sharing his message, his truth. And pray as we go into that that it isn't rejected, that they won't reject him. But we set ourselves aside in that. There's something far more significant than that. And, and us. Is about him, his word, his truth, sharing him. Any other thoughts? Appreciate all those insights that you shared.
share with me and with one another. Hopefully those here at home or uh, this camera, not the camera, the microphone on the camera is picking these things up. For those that are listening at home sometime tomorrow, um, one thing to emphasize is when we are able to come back safe for you to return, that this is why we gather. This is what is so good about coming together and studying together is you can read these verses over and over again and at different points throughout your life, receive different insights about them, but I guarantee you there are thoughts that you've shared tonight that I've read this and reread this and I could have read it a dozen more times and not come up with some of the things that you see when you look at that. And so we benefit one another as iron sharp sharpens iron, uh, just as we read in the Proverbs. This is benefiting one another, strengthening one another's faith. This is why we come together, not to get a little check mark on our attendance chart, but so that through these times we can be building one another up in our faith. And when 1 Peter chapter 2, the early part of that chapter, laid that out for us so beautifully with that, that picture for those of us that are wired visually as living stones. God is arranging us to become this beautiful spiritual house. Part of that is this Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. When we get back, for those in the auditorium, we get back into the book of James. And those downstairs, we continue looking at the new life in Christ, developing the devotional life as a part of our day-to-day -day life in Christ. And then we worship together, and we sing songs of praise, and we are joined together in prayer, and we observe Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection coming around the Lord's table. We hear more of that preaching from the book of Colossians that just inspires and lifts us up and encourages us. And then next Wednesday, we're back here again to continue in 1 Peter chapter 3, studying his word, not to just only know things, but so that this goes deeper into our minds and our hearts and our lives, so that we love the Lord with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And yielding our lives to Him, putting Him on the throne, the natural overflow is that He will be the, on the His name will be on the tip of our tongue, be the first thing from our lips, and we'll declare Him with our mouths, and that declaration of our faith will match the lives that others see us live. Imperfectly, but it'll line up. The word hypocrite will be the farthest thing from their thoughts when they see us put Jesus on the throne in our hearts and live our lives for him and then want to tell them about him. We've said before, the last thing we want to encounter when we, when we make an invitation for someone to come here and worship with us, hey, you want to come to church with me? The last thing we want to hear is them say, you go to church. <laughs> that's, that's the exact opposite uh, of what we want, uh, what we're talking about here, and what we want to have happen. And it starts if we put our, put Christ, set apart Christ as Lord in our heart. And that would never occur. And when we make that defense of our faith, when we give that answer, or we might stumble for our words a little bit just to try to get conversation started. We might feel like we're red or we're sweating or uh, we're struggling in some way, but that will be a natural overflow if Christ is set apart as Lord in our heart, flowing out of lives that are being lived for him. And it's just not about us. We can set our Worries, our fears, fear of rejection, fear of not knowing enough, our ego, we can set all that aside. And declare his praises. Think about the, the man from whom Jesus casts out a legion of demons back over there in Mark chapter 5. And Jesus tells him, 
hey, buddy, sharing the gospel, it's rocket science, pal. You're going to have to go to school for a very, very long time. And you're going to have to learn some very big concepts and some key words, and you're going to have to know your stuff. You have to lay it out on charts for people, and it is going to take you longer than it takes someone to become a doctor to become a, someone who can share their faith in, in me. That's what Jesus tells them, right, in Mark chapter 5? No, he tells them, go and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he's had mercy on you. Amen. Do that. <laughs> and that guy goes and he does it in the Decapolis, the ten cities. Shares the truth about Jesus there. And all the people were what? You recall the verse? The NIV version says, amazed. Wow. Listen to this. Man, talk about his faith in Jesus. How much he had done for him and how he had mercy on him. That's it. It's that straightforward. It's that easy. We don't need the fanciest charts. We don't need wonderful illustrations. Our lives are the illustration. That's where we're going with this. The lives that we're living, the change, the transformation in us, that's the illustration of the truth of the gospel. And all we need to do is bring people to the word of God and he will do the heavy lifting. He'll do it. And he wants to do it through us. He wants to do it through you and me. If we would have that mindset that we're just instruments in his hands. And he'll do great things through your life. And lead someone else to come to know him. To be eternally saved. There's nothing greater than that. Okay, we've gone over time tonight. Uh, appreciate those thoughts that you've shared tonight. Let's conclude with a prayer and let's look forward to being here and having more time next week in, in 1 Peter 3, 15 and 16. Father, this has been a blessing to me and I hope and I pray that it has been a blessing to each one physically present here, as well as to those who take the time to uh, watch this midweek study at home with the, on the video. And we pray that in this time that we have been able to be strengthened in our faith, to be encouraged by one another in the joy of our fellowship, and that having the opportunity to, to, to have our hearts lifted up by uniting them in song and raising our voices in praise to you. But we've also had the opportunity to, to pray and to be led so beautifully before you in prayer and know that you already were and are and will be working in the lives of those that we have brought before you and here in this nation with all the struggles and, and, and different things that so many are experiencing and going through that you have heard us and that you are working right now to bring about good and to bring praise, glory, and honor to your most holy name. And Father, you desire to be on the throne in our hearts, in our lives, so that we would live lives that match the message that we desire to proclaim. So help us to be continually transformed in the likeness of Jesus, that we might look more and more like him and less and less like our old selves. So that people will see him living in us and want to know more about him, not about us, but about him. And that we will be ready with his name on our lips, that we will be ready to declare your praises, to share him with all those that we have opportunity to share him with. And that you, Father, we know and we pray, are already preparing their hearts to receive that message. That, that seed will be planted, that it will be watered, that will bring the increase. And Father, that only happens if we have the same heart, the same attitude, the same mindset of Esther. That we would say that we are here such a time as this. So Father, use us 
we are your servants. And we are privileged to be your children. And because of you, we will spend eternity with you. And Father, we look forward to that day and say, even so, <clears throat> now, come, Lord Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name.